this is a quick pediatrics or internal medicine also because here I'm going to talk about extravascular hemolysis versus intravascular hemolysis extravascular hemolysis versus intravascular hemolysis remember guys this is the differences you should know very well because in USMLE or in a, any other medical board examination uh, if you know the findings then it will help you to differentiate whether it's uh, the diagnosis is intravascular uh, intra hemolytic anemia or the extravascular uh, hemolytic anemia so the name itself indicates the name is very easy extravascular means the cause is outside the what you call defect in the RBCs intravascular is within the what you call uh, RBCs like microangiopathic hemolytic anemia okay GSXPD something like that right so and uh, PNH that is a paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria so these are the best examples for this so but the important thing over here is uh, usually what happens and how you have to find out uh, in examination is look at the most important points I'm talking over here is RBC okay RBC morphology RBC morphology in extravascular it will be abnormal right it will be abnormal whereas in intravascular hemolysis it will be normal okay that's really very important and the other important point is hemoglobinuria Glo okay hemoglobinuria or hemoglobinemia well the hemoglobinuria or hemonemia is not seen in extravascular hemolysis it's not seen over here whereas in intravascular hemolysis you see right this is very simple right this is very simple because hemoglobin is not released into the blood that's why you don't see in extravascular hemolysis and it's released in the blood that's why you see in the urine the hemoglobin you see in the urine in the blood right hemoglobinemia or hemoglobinuria and the other important is I'm talking about is the very important point that is haptoglobin okay Haptoglobin. Haptoglobin. Remember, the haptoglobin is really very helpful for you guys to differentiate whether it's extracellular hemolysis or intravascular hemolysis. The haptoglobin is nothing but it's a protein that is encoded by the gene known as the HP gene. HP gene. Okay. HP gene. And in the blood plasma okay what is what does it do is uh, this haptoglobin binds to the free hemoglobin means HP binds with HB okay binds and it has very great affinity for this hemoglobin okay so haptoglobin binds free hemoglobin released from erythrocytes with high affinity and therefore it inhibits its oxidase activity and inhibits the uh, oxidase activity okay the hepato the, the the haptoglobin and the hemoglobin complex what it has formed because of the binding will then be removed by the what you call a reticular endothelial system mostly the spleen it will be removed by whom spleen so this complex is removed by whom the spleen right now let's see what happens this haptoglobin we know in intravascular hemolysis or here in intravascular hemolysis free hemoglobin will be re released into the circulation that is into the blood and has the haptoglobin will bind to the hemo hemoglobin when the free hemoglobin as we see the hemoglobin area is seen in a, what you call intravascular hemolysis this free hemoglobin binds to who the haptoglobin and has the level of haptoglobin in the blood what happens it's 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 low remember so that's why you see low haptoglobin levels in intravascular hemolysis whereas in extravascular hemolysis the reticular endothelial system that's especially spleen the spleen has monocytes phagocytes the, right 
these monocytes, phagocytes, the erythrocytes and hemoglobin is not released into the circulation. That's why the hepatoglobin levels are normal. That's why you see normal hepatoglobin levels in extravascular hemolysis. This is a very important point guys, very important point. Okay guys, so you know why hepatoglobin is um, low in intravascular hemolysis and why it's um, normal in uh, what you call uh, um, extravascular hemolysis okay so this is a really very important point guys so let's talk about the other features that is hemosiderinuria let me write over in the next screen okay hemosiderinuria hemosiderinuria so it will you, you don't see hemosiderinuria in extravascular this is really very simple and whereas in intravascular you see right you see definitely you should see because of release of this hemoglobin right it goes and changes into that hemosiderin that's why you see hemosiderinuria right and the splenomegaly remember the splenomegaly splenomegaly is seen where is seen in because of the extra what you call reticular endothelial activity, more activity by the monocytes, splenic monocytes, that's why the spleen is enlarged and you see splenomegaly. Whereas in intravascular, you don't see anything like that. Okay, right? So guys, examples are many. Just try to memorize this table. This is really very important for your ASMLE or for any other medical board examination or even for medical students. So thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.